Welcome to Life Devotions, and thank you for joining me today. Heard of your faith and love is the title of this devotion. I've heard people talk about you. I once saw a sticker in somebody's house, oh, well, maybe 35 years ago, but it stuck with me. It was in the Netherlands somewhere. I saw, and, it, and on this little plaque in the house, it says, do not talk about yourself while you're here. We'll talk about you when you're gone. <laughs> and friends, it's impossible to live in this life without people around us talking about us. But what is it that people would say about us? What is it that people hear about us, see in us? And I understand you can be misjudged. I've had my share of that in life. You can be misunderstood, and sometimes because things could have been done differently and better by us. I know I sure could have done things better many times, but friends, eventually your life will have a reputation about you. Eventually people come to know you. If you live long enough, then people will. And here the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 1 verse 15 says, Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you. You see, their faith in the Lord Jesus and their love for the saints was being talked about. And I'll never forget this old movie. I'm not somebody that talks about this very often, but somebody, a dear Christian friend of mine, they one time told me about this old black and white movie called Sergeant York with a man called Gary Cooper as the main character in the film. And it's a very old film. And he turns out to become a world, uh, a, a war hero. But in the beginning of the movie, he is a rowdy drunkard and goes around there in, in the southern part of the United States on his horse with his two friends and shooting up places, not people, just making noise and being rowdy. And he was a hard working farmer with his mom and his sister and his brother there in a real poor, 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 poor area. Well, anyway, everybody knew he was rowdy and they were having church in the film, having church, and he's shooting up the place and making noise and everything. Well, anyway, he gets saved in that movie. He gets saved. He goes to church and they're singing, give me that old time religion, and he gives his life to Jesus. And you see a transformed man. You see a transformed man. And everybody knew him as the rowdy drunkard and they can't believe it. It is the shock of shocks that he's become meek and gentle with the nature of Jesus and his love for Christ and his, his faith for Christ and his love for people became instantly obvious. And that's what, why I mentioned this movie. It really stuck with me and it's a really beautiful film really. Sergeant York with Gary Cooper. And you know, friends, I think it ought to be obvious to others that we believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. When people may ask you, you know you used to smoke nonstop. I don't see you smoke anymore. Have you stopped? Yeah, I have. Why? You know, I gave my life to Christ and something inside of me changed. And some of these appetites, it just wasn't there. And I just kind of felt, let's leave it alone. So, yeah, I don't have an appetite for it anymore. I don't, I don't really want it anymore. And it wasn't easy because when I didn't want it, it wanted me. <laughs> And even though I shook it off, it wouldn't let go. So it took me a little while to get free from it. But yeah, and I just, but you used to drink and drink. And now you're not drinking like you used to drink. Yeah, you know, since Christ come into my life and I am filled with this Holy Spirit, 
I feel it fights with that knowing of God's Spirit in me. So yeah, I felt to leave it. I'd rather be filled with the Spirit than to be drunk with wine, as the Bible says. And you used to cuss. I mean, you used to use. I never hear you use those words anymore. I just can't. I just, you see, it ought to be obvious to people that you now live by faith a new life in Christ Jesus. And in your love for others, we used to gossip, we used to lie, we used to defraud people, or tell somebody something was worth something when you well knew it wasn't, or when you told somebody and, and you took them for money and you thought you really gained a great victory. You would go to the store and, and the person working there doing that job for so many hours a day by accident paid you 10 pounds back and you thought that was a blessing of the Lord. Now you can't bear it if they give you a pound too much and you go bring it back. What happened to you? Yeah, that, that person has to give an account of how their cash still comes out at the end of the day and I sure wouldn't want to be able to take from them what they work so hard to do. No, I can't do that anymore. You can't steal anymore. That's stealing, folks. That's not a blessing of the Lord when somebody backs in and pays you back too much. You have to give it back. It's not yours. And my point is I'm making it clear. Everybody ought to be able to hear about you, talk about you, that you now believe in Jesus, that you now have his love for others. You see, it says here in 1 John chapter 3, verse 23 and 24, this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, this is God's commandment, that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. Now he who keeps His commandment abides in Him, and He in Him. And by this we know that, we abide, that He abides in us by the Spirit whom He has given us. You see, as you receive Christ and you begin to do what he says because his word becomes a life in your heart and in your mind, the Holy Spirit comes to you. The Holy Spirit's here, he's here, but he wants to connect with the heart that loves God. He wants to connect with the heart that follows his word, that follows his commandments. Jesus came to the Jordan where John the Baptist was baptizing. And when John saw him, he says, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. But Jesus didn't just stand there. He came to John into the water and John says, oh Lord, oh Lord, I have need to be baptized with you for you will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. And Jesus said, John, permit me to fulfill all righteousness. Do not resist me. And John humbly took the beautiful Christ and baptized him under water. And as Jesus came up from the water, he lifted his hands and began to worship and pray to the Father in heaven opened. And the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And the voice was heard saying from heaven, you are my son, in you I'm well pleased. And John, says in 1 John, John the Baptist says of Jesus, he who sent me to baptize said to me upon whom you see the Holy Spirit descending and remaining, he is the one, I did not know him. I did not know him three times, he said. I didn't know who he was mentioning, but I bear witness to you that I saw heaven open and the Holy Spirit descending upon Jesus and he is the one, he is the one. And you see, the Holy Spirit is waiting to come to you and me 24 seven as we live in the commandment of our Father like Jesus. He said, please grant me to fulfill all righteousness or grant me to do what the Father's will is that I am baptized into his riches of glory. And Jesus Christ yielded his body up to the Father and the Holy Spirit flooded it and filled it. Oh friends, don't yield your body up to the lust of the world where you embody the things of the world, 
the lust of smoking and drinking and cussing and, and gossip and uncleanness and ungodliness and nobody can see that you have any faith in Christ or any of his love for others. Yield your body up to the Heavenly Father consistently and let him fill you with the Holy Spirit and flood you with the day and night that you, everybody can see it, that you believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and his love for precious souls is in you and people begin to hear about it and talk about it. I think it ought to be obvious to everybody who we serve. Jesus said in John chapter 13, Jesus said in John chapter 13, verse 34, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know, this is what people will see, that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. You see, friends, there is without question one of the great marks of those that believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ is that they have his love for one another. I believe I need to live in this 24 seven with my dear wife and my children and my grandchildren and with all of you as I come to you through these devotions and with every person I meet anywhere, everywhere, all the time, even those who hate me even those who curse me, even those who cause me sorrow and pain. Absolutely, read Matthew 5, 6 and 7 and read Luke chapter 6. I believe we need to live in this towards all men. Let me close with you out of 1 John chapter 4, starting at verse 12. 1 John, here it is, chapter 4, starting at verse 12. No one has seen God at any time, but if we love one another, God abides in us and his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son as Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we have boldness in the day of judgment and so forth. Friends, there is without question one of the great identifiable parts of each and every one of us who believe upon the Lord Jesus that we bear his love for one another and that people can talk about it, say, you know, if you meet him, you'll experience God's love. Yeah, I've seen him suffer when people were cruel to him and he didn't retaliate, you see. Uh, if I could just, Go ahead and give you one more verse here out of 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. No, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow in his steps, who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, did not revile in return. And when he suffered, he, he did not threaten, but committed to himself, to him who judges righteously by his stripes were healed and so forth. Let this be the thing that people say about us, that we bear the love of our loving heavenly Father, amen. Have a good day.